Alrighty, I've made my way down to a, like a deserted little like new industrial estate thingy and I thought instead of doing my usual, you know, like mechanical stuff, see how much I know and then you guys criticize me and stuff like that for stuff that I don't know, which is basically what happens in every single video, I thought I'd be able to share some of my personal knowledge about photography towards you guys because I know that a lot of you guys obviously watching YouTube and stuff like that, you're obviously into multimedia and then you all are obviously into cars. I couldn't believe this, but last time I filmed down here, which was like two weeks ago, there was like a house right there, like a display home, and it was right there, and now it's gone. I'm so confused. Anyway, as I was saying, I know I've been trying to implement a lot of mechanical stuff into my videos and honestly, it's something that I don't know a great deal about. I know that I want to get into it and that's why I keep uploading that sort of stuff because you guys actually teach me more than I actually know and it's brilliant. I absolutely love it when you guys comment ideas about what I could be doing and you know, stuff I could be fixing, stuff I could be improving and I absolutely love it. But anyway, I thought it'd be a good idea to make a video that I am very interested about and a video that I know I have a lot of knowledge about and that is with photography. So ever since I can remember, I have been behind cameras and I've absolutely loved photography, everything to do with that. I've even done a degree at university at JMC Academy, which was uh, a diploma of film and television, which that all worked around angles and cameras and stuff like that. And pretty much I've done it for years, ever since I was probably like six or seven and I picked up my first ever camera. So anyway, today I thought it'd be a really good opportunity for me to make a video just explaining how you guys can get better quality images and how you guys can get better angles and everything just using the equipment that you have. I'm doing this for beginners and stuff like that or people that want to get their photos just to their very next level. Um, as I said this isn't going to be for pros or anything like that and I only have the beginner or base model equipment and I thought that I could show you guys how to get sort of semi-professional results using you know standard equipment. So anyway this right here is the car we're going to be shooting today. This is my 2008 Ford Falcon FG XR6. Now if we have a look around this side because I'm not an American, if we jump in this one right here, whoop, if we jump in this one right here we will find that I have a Canon 60D. So this right here guys is my Canon 60D. Now this is by no means professional level camera, in fact it's actually two versions older than the newest one that's out at the moment which is the 80D. Now this one right here is equipped with a 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens and I didn't end up bringing any of my good lenses out today because I didn't actually want to show you guys what you could be doing on something that probably costs you know upwards of $2,000. I wanted to show you guys what you could be doing with $500 and even what you guys could be doing with something that's in your pocket which everyone has which is a smartphone. Now I'm going to be showing you a couple of tips and tricks what you can do with the smartphone as well as what you can be doing with the Canon 60D or any DSLR that you own but first what we're going to need is a SD card because I just bought this one because my other ones have died so I'm probably going to kill this one too. I'm hoping the wind isn't too bad for you guys either. I really hope it isn't. So these tips are just going to be for static photography, stuff like that, not rolling shots either. I'm going to put some, you know, clips of, I'm probably going to put some photos of some rolling shots up just to try and put a point across if I don't have any photos that will sort of explain what I'm trying to talk about and I have no idea what I'm saying right now. But anyway, this is going to be some tips for if you are just working on, you know, if you're doing some photos of your car or a client's car or whether you're just doing some photos at a car meet, stuff like that. So first of all, one little tip I thought I'd give you guys is you want to make sure that the cars you're working on are clean. Um, mine at the moment is probably the dirtiest it has ever been, however I didn't want to go clean it before I made this video. I know I'm absolutely slack. However, my car's just done a 1000 meter road trip uh, through mud and it's about to rain again probably. So. It's, it wasn't really worth my time to go clean it, to be honest. <laughs> so, first of all, you want to do, make sure your car that you're working on is pretty much clean, <laughs> even though I haven't. So the second thing you want to be looking at is what time of day it is. Now, at the moment, this is overcast weather, which is my personal favorite for shooting. I hate shooting in full sun. I absolutely hate it with a passion. I love shooting in the mornings. I love shooting in the afternoons. I actually love shooting at night, which is brilliant. And I put some night photos up at the moment of what sort of stuff that I do. However, I love shooting in overcast weather. It is my absolute favorite. I love it how the soft lighting, you know, just the curves of my car just look beautiful in soft lighting. Uh, try to avoid shooting midday and stuff like that. Try to avoid shooting in full sun because that can make your car look really bad. You can end up with a lot of uh, highlights that you don't want. You can end up with a lot of shadows that you don't want and just all around it's a really horrible experience. <laughs> 
Alrighty, so before you guys start shooting at all, you want to make sure that you have a decent location. Now, as I said before, I'm currently just in the middle of a road which I found uh, a couple of months ago. And pretty much it's deserted, absolutely no one comes up this road. And uh, there's no houses around, so there's absolutely no one coming up this road whatsoever. Typically with my car and other cars of my sort, um, I like to shoot in industrial locations simply because that's my personal preference. Um, I also like shooting, you know, out in sort of nature with like, let's say, cane fields or, you know, or that sort of stuff. I like to have a very natural or industrial look to my shoots. Uh, also, I like to have a really shallow depth of focus, so I like to have just the car in focus and then I like to have the background really out of focus. So on a phone, you can't really recreate that depth of focus as what you get on a camera. However, when I'm working with a camera, I definitely like to try and drop my aperture as low as it possibly can go and try and get the most in focus that I possibly can and the background out of focus as most as I possibly can. Alright, so before you guys even begin to start shooting, you want to have a look at the wheel position of your car. So I took two photos before, one with a really bad wheel position and one with a really good wheel position. So what you want to do is you want to turn your wheel if you're just taking photos statically of your car like this. You want to make sure that your wheel is pointing towards the camera. This gives the viewer something to sort of look at and you want to show off your nice rims instead of just showing some of your tyre because your tyre isn't really a nice thing to look at to be honest. Alright, so now we're going to be picking up the camera and I'm going to show you guys some stuff that you can be doing on your camera to try and get some better quality photos. I know every single person that has started that has also done it. This right here is zooming. So what I like to do with my photos is I like to stand back and actually zoom into the car. Now this is going to make your car seem a little bit less distorted and stuff like that. And I'll quickly show you what I mean. So if you could imagine, I'm fully zoomed out at the moment. And if I wanted to get a cool photo with this, I would maybe, you know, move up here or, you know, I'd take a photo from up here or stuff like that. But pretty much every single person in the car mate has seen that one person that will take a photo like that and to be honest I don't really like that angle at all as you can see the roof of my car is all distorted all around here is distorted my wheels are distorted the whole front of the car just looks so completely disgusting and I'll quickly show you what you can do is if you walk back a little bit and actually physically move yourself away from the car and then zoom in And as you can see right there, that is a way better photo than what I had before. So what actually happens is when you're up very close, your vehicle will look very distorted, stuff like that. However, when you move back and you zoom into the subject, you'll notice that your frame is a lot more flat, I guess you could say. Now, with this right here, you can actually get better depth of field. You can also get a little bit nicer curves and angles on your car because they won't be distorted. So I'm going to go quickly take some photos on my Canon 60D right now and show you what you can do to make sure you get those good angles. So I'm going to quickly jump on the Canon 60D right now. The sort of photos you can be taking if you just stand back from the object and zoom in. So now I'm going to quickly show you guys the difference between shooting at 18 millimeters and shooting at 55 millimeters. It's so different. So as you guys can see right there, those photos look so much better in my personal preference when you actually stand back and zoom in. Now this can work for absolutely anything. Uh, if you guys see maybe model shots and stuff like that, I might see if I can find some of uh, my girlfriend Sarah where we actually went out and we took some photos one day where we stood back and we zoomed into her and then also some photos where, you know, we just stood there completely zoomed out and yeah. It just looks really bad. So my personal preference in what can help you guys with your photos is definitely standing back a fair bit, per physically move yourself away from the car and then zoom into it. So along with the zooming in trick you guys have with your camera, you can also do it on your phone. Now only some phones are gonna be able to do this. My phone is an iPhone X, which is probably one of my favorite cameras when it comes to photography and stuff like that. So if you guys can see my phone screen right now, I'll quickly see if I can make it a little bit brighter for you guys. So if you guys can see my phone screen right now, I actually have a cool photo of my car sort of out right here. However, if you look into the bottom corner here, you'll see a one times button. If you press that, it will actually switch to the other camera. So on the front, you actually have two lenses and it'll switch to the second lens down there. And now this lens is actually a zoom lens. So you guys can take better photos like that. And so now that two times zoom right there actually looks better than the one times in my personal opinion. And I'll show you how that works right now. Now if we stand back and go into two times. 
you'll notice just from those two quick photos oh my god you'll notice from just those two quick photos that i took that one is a lot less distorted than the other and to be honest i actually love the look of the two time zoom on this so another big thing to also look out for in your car is also having a look at some of the details that really make this car stand out one of the things i love to shoot on my car is actually the tail lights because they do have that neochrome tint across the back of it and i'll quickly show you now so I absolutely love showing off this part of my car right here and it makes my car stand out from the rest so I absolutely love shooting so I absolutely love shooting the back end of this car so what you guys can do is look around the car that you're shooting right now and also have a look at some of the details that really makes it stand out so if I was to do that with my car right now I absolutely love the tail lights you know if you come around this side right here you know I really love the back fitment there and if you keep walking around you know there's Ford Mafia logos um, also, I don't know how well you guys can see it right now, but I've actually got angel eyes as well. Um, I don't know, just some little stuff about the car that you guys can pick up on that you really want to try and accentuate. So maybe there's some little stuff on your car that you know you, maybe you want to try and accentuate. Um, some of the stuff you really want to show off and yeah, you know, every single car has them. That's why people, you know, make their cars unique as they possibly can. Um, so yeah, just little stuff like that. I'm really hoping this wind is definitely not destroying my footage. So another thing you guys could be looking at, especially with your angles as well, you probably saw me take a couple of photos before. Now you'll notice that those angles right there are taken in the one quarter to three quarter angle. So basically what that means is one quarter of the front is showing or three quarters of the front is showing and then a quarter of the car or three quarters of the car is showing at the side of the vehicle. So I know it's pretty hard to explain but pretty much what you're looking at behind me right now is a quarter angle which means that three quarters of the car three quarters of the frame is probably showing the back of my car here and then one quarter of the frame is probably showing the side of the car you guys can move around and you know take some different types of photos make sure to get lots of different angles of your car so you can see possibly you could get like a side on shot where it's just the complete side of the car you can also get a complete back shot which is where you just take a photo from the very 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 back of the car uh, you can you can go with uh, three quarter shots, which is you know you can get the side of the car as well as the back. You can get top shots. You can get every single kind of shot you could possibly want. So another thing that pretty much most cameras and most phones do is actually have a rule of thirds function. So what this does is helps your composition. So what you can look at is maybe instead of having the car in the middle right here and you know having it just sit right there maybe try and move it so it's like in the rule of thirds so what we might do is we might move back and maybe have that tree in the way you know so that way so that tree right there is in the rule of thirds and then my car is in the rule of thirds so you have you know that tree is a focal point my car is a focal point and then this right here maybe you could have that blue that blue section is a focal point so maybe if we even like move the car like that so maybe that's an even better photo than the one you took before I don't know maybe just something for you guys to think about when you're taking photos so if you guys don't understand the rule of thirds pretty much what it is is if you divide the screen up let's say there's a line there and a line here and a line here and a line here what that actually does is that's your focal point as to any photo that you look at so this is the sort of things you'll be looking at you'll be looking at let's say if I'm off center right now and then that tree is in the way you know you're looking at me you're looking at that tree you know you're looking at there you're looking at there you're looking at there and you're looking at here pretty much you can make your photos more exciting by using that rule of thirds by all means you don't have to but just it helps with your composition I think one of the best things is just experimenting with everything you can shoot from like you you know down on the road you can shoot from far away you can shoot from close up just try and find out what works for you your camera and your car and you'll definitely find it very soon so anyway guys the sun's come out and i think that's my photo shoot pretty much over i hope you guys really enjoyed the video and hopefully i definitely gave you guys some insight as to how you can take better quality photos as a beginner uh, as comparison to you know how professionals do it and stuff like that so yeah if you guys have any more tips feel free to leave them in the comment section down below the video also leave a like and subscribe so anyway i will see you all very soon Peace out.